let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten a haircut and you just thought, this isn't quite right? It's not that it's a bad haircut, but it doesn't sit well on you. If you've ever been in that situation, it's not you, it's your length. What's good everybody? The bob is trending and for very good reason. But the number one question that I have been getting is, will it look good on me? Will it? Will I look like she? Now this is a very complex question that by the end of this video, you will have answered. In my professional opinion, there is a perfect bob for everybody. You just need to find the right length and style, which is exactly what we will discover today as we analyze your face. Now, I'm not saying that you have to listen to me. I'm, who am I? I'm only a professional hairstylist, curly hair specialist, and short hair enthusiast. Why do I keep doing this? But the reason why you should watch this video is because it will help explain the reason why we all feel like we have an awkward length, which happens to be one of the deterring factors of cutting your hair. There is actually a scientific, mathematical, and architectural reason why certain hairstyles just aren't for everyone. Not that they're not, but I mean, you know how the saying goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Part one, history. <laughs> Never been a huge fan of her, honestly. Unless it's her story, I don't really give a shit about history. I don't give a shit, it's just, to me personally, not my most interesting subject, respectfully. But we cannot deny history, so. Part one, history. To dive into this topic, we're gonna have to go back in time. Gucci. Vintage. Oh, this is actually yes. It's um, it was my father's. He's he gave it to me. Um, and I love it so much. What was I saying? I was saying. In order to dive into this topic, we're gonna have to go back in time and visualize those ancient Greeks and those mathematical freaks because it's gonna require a little bit of history, some science, and unfortunately for me, some math. I hate math. It makes me sweat. It makes me cry. It makes me want to die. But we need her to explain the phenomenon of the golden ratio. Now you may have heard of the golden ratio before or one of its other names, the Phi Ratio, the Fibonacci Ratio, the Divine Ratio, or the Golden Mean. Did you expect me to say ratio again? <laughs> Let's get a ratio count on this video. Ratio, is it even a real word anymore? I don't know. The Golden Ratio is one to 1.618. And we can find this ratio by doing a little bit of a little bit of math, or we can just look in nature because the golden ratio is everywhere. And for centuries, it was used to define ideal beauty. The golden ratio can be found everywhere, all throughout nature and all throughout history. Sculptors, artists, and doctors even have referenced this in order to create the most visually appealing whatever that is. As they say, a visually balanced face is 1.168 times longer then it is wide. Again, it can be found anywhere, but let's talk about how it can be found in the hair and why this is important. But before we go any further, I just wanna mention and clarify that we do not use the golden ratio as a beauty standard, but rather as a tool to help understand design proportion to achieve an overall more balanced look to enhance beauty. And as a beauty professional, I think it is pretty interesting. And if you are interested and you care to know how your face matches up to the golden ratio, then you can go ahead and do your own mathematical equation to find phi, which is again, 1.618 by measuring the hairline to your chin versus your cheeks. There's also some quirky little apps that you can take a picture of your face and it'll scan it for you that way. That's what I did and while it wasn't 100% accurate because I got different results each time I did it, it was interesting. Or you can do the McCard, I think I said that right, McCard beauty analysis and I can put some resources for you to try it out in the description box below. But let's talk about the flow. Because besides your face shape and your ratio, your hair texture, density, wave pattern and lifestyle all need to be considered when picking the right bob for you. So let's get customizing. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gotten a haircut and you just thought, well, this isn't quite right? It's not that it's a bad haircut, but it doesn't sit well on you. If you've ever been in that situation, it's not you, it's your length. Welcome to hairstylist math. Because while I'm not a mathematician, I am a hairstylist, I am an artist, and I choose a simplified way to measure your golden ratio. Well, we might not exactly measure your face, 
but we will measure your hair length based on your face to help achieve the golden ratio. So let's take a look-see. We're gonna do some facial analyzing, paying attention to your features to determine what length you should be. This is where you grab a mirror. Overall, do you see sharp features or soft, rounded features? Depending on what we see will tell us the length of hair you should be. For sharp features, pay attention to your nose, your cheekbones, and your chin or your jaw. If you could describe these as very angry, angular or even pointy, then I would say you have sharp features. Whereas soft, rounded features do not have a pointy nose, they may have a rounded little button nose. They might have pronounced cheekbones that are very rounded or even a softer, rounded jawline. You might have a little extra fullness to your face. And if that's the case, then you are soft or rounded. And if not, then you're sharp. You're one or the other. So pick one. That way we can pick your hairstyle. We might need one of these. <laughs> and let me know if you've ever been to a hairstylist that has done this to you. You might not, but hairstylists that were trained under Vidal Sassoon, who is one of the most iconic hairstylists in the industry, he used to either use one of these like flexible tape measures that a lot of dressmakers may use, or he would have a comb with numbers on it with measurements. You could also just use a sheet of paper and put some markings on it and measure that later. But we're gonna place your measurement and I stole this from a Victoria's Secret. I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. Um, this is for bras, but I mean, it works. We're gonna place this at the top center of your head where you would have a middle part, even if you don't wear your hair in the middle, where you would have a middle part, place it there. And now we're going to determine the length of hair. Now remember your features. If your features are rounded, think of a circle and how it is even all around, your hair length should be an even number. So we're talking lengths of two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Mel, for helping you out. <laughs> right? Give me a like if you haven't already. Come on, how do you make it this far in the video? And not giving this video a thumbs up. I mean, unless you don't wanna see any more content like this, but if you do, you know what to do, okay? Back at it, rounded features look best with an even length of hair, an even number. And if you have sharp features, then you want an odd number. And that's it. Isn't that simple? I know, it kind of sounds a little crazy, but listen to me, it actually works. You yourself may have had the experience sitting in a salon chair, and after the whole haircut was done, you thought, do you think we could just take one more inch off? That one inch? makes a huge diff. And thankfully, if your haircut is not quite sitting right, it is an easy fix. And just for fun, let's take a look at me. I would say I have rounded features. I'm gonna measure from here. Where are we at? 10 inches. I literally have a 10 inch haircut. And is this not just doing everything for me? Everything for me. Like, I don't have to do anything else. Hair does it for me. But okay, this isn't the only thing. Now that we've established your face, your length, we need to address your texture. Get out of here. If you have textured hair, this cannot be forgotten. And newsflash, everyone has textured hair because everyone has a hair texture. No matter what your wave pattern, even if you're straight, you have textured hair, whether that is coarse, medium, or fine. That didn't rhyme. But that did, I digress. This is important because it's gonna help you determine how your hair should be cut and what styling might be like for you. If you have very thick, coarse, super dense hair, I'm gonna be honest, cutting your hair into a bob is gonna be tricky. Not that it can't be done, but it needs to be done right. And it needs to be done light. You're gonna need to remove a lot of weight out of the hair so it doesn't just sit there like a literal helmet on top of your head. It's really tough to get a nice blunt bob without adding some texture, removing weight, maybe even having some layers in really thick and coarse hair. It just needs that extra detailing so it can have some movement and not feel so heavy on your head. This is gonna mean thinning out the hair, adding layers, graduation, or even an undercut situation. That would help the bob to lay more flat and most importantly, prevent those really like poofy ends that would tend to give the, the Lord Farquaad vibe. A short king, but the haircut might not sing. Oh, oh, oh. You gotta put some Shrek in there. Okay, Amanda, please do it for the Shrek is love. Shrek is life, girlies. Ah, ah. 
my suggestion if you have super thick hair would be to lean towards a longer bob. That way your hair has a little extra weight to hold it down. Just remember to make the length even or odd depending on your face. Now for medium texture, your hair is beautiful for this. Of any curl pattern really, because your hair will cooperate a lot more. Medium textured hair is a lot more pliable, it's easier to style, which means it's also easy to achieve a lot of different movements with some different weight removal techniques. I myself have medium to fine textured hair, and what I will say about waves, and this is important, if your wave pattern falls within the curly to coily category, and I don't always suggest this, but I would definitely recommend cutting the hair dry. A dry haircut in its natural state will allow you to build out the shape and really customize the cut to the curl so you can identify where there is extra weight and where you might want to build out that shape, which is much more important at a bob length as opposed to long hair. But if you plan on getting a bob and wearing it into pressed, straight, sleek styles, then that's different. You would want to cut the hair while it is straight. But again, if your hair is curly, at least for the initial haircut, the first time you're chopping it, where there might be some shock with it, I definitely advise that you take it slow and it's done dry. That is how I achieved my haircut as well. And emphasis on the slow because it took me three tries. I just kept going shorter and shorter until the haircut started singing to me and I mean, say no more. <laughs> Stunning, meant for me, so fun, so chic. But finally, finally, if you have fine textured hair, you are going to look divine here. Fine hair just looks so good when it's cut into a bob. When it's cut short, if it's cut blunt, the heavier the lines and the weight points in the hair, the better. You will honestly feel like you have so much more hair once it's cut shorter. What I will advise is you just keep a dry shampoo and a texture spray handy at all times, perhaps even your steamer for refreshing, but that plays into lifestyle. Lifestyle. We can't close off this bob haircut video without mentioning that your life Life will change in many, many, many ways. One of those including your daily routine. Now, some may speak from experience that you will have more daily maintenance and have to restyle your hair every day if you choose to chop. But personally, I mean, I would like to debunk that for myself. I do not claim that, and that has not been my experience. My mornings have been easy as ever. That being said, maintaining this isn't more simple, it's just different. And if you want to see what my new maintenance routine is and how I am living with this hair day to day, let me know and we can make a week in my life video. But besides that, in a few more weeks, I will probably have to trim my hair to some degree. That's the main thing with a bob or short haircuts in general. You really see all of the length as it is growing. And so you might find around that two or so month mark, you might hit that awkward length and need to cut it again. Or Get a little crafty with your styling until you get past that and then you're good again and then it's awkward again and then it's fine again and then it's awkward again and the cycle shall continue. But alas, again, we can save all that for future videos. I hope to see you keep coming back for more because we post on this channel each and every Texture Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Tuesdays as well, if you like a little short video. And for updates on all of our content as well as monthly giveaways, make sure that you sign up for our newsletter. The details for that are on our website, Means by Mel. Com. I'll have that linked in the description box below, as well as some other resources if you wanted to learn more about the golden ratio. But as for this video, this has been your main girl Mel. Thank you so much for watching. I am out. Peace! My sunflowers are fucking dying. Can I wake these up a little bit? How do I? Fuck, the water's all fucking evaporated. Jesus Christ, they're thirsty. Can I pour for my Stanley? This thing's almost empty. Well, okay, I got some water for the kids too. I'm pulling out all the stops, it was sugar and warm water. Will this wake them up? I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Nor, nor. Come on, look alive. Should I just get rid of them? Fuck. I mean, it's giving fall. Oh, yeah, maybe you need to go. You need to go. I think in a weird way, they're giving what they need to give and that is summer's ending. Interlude. Okay, I'll just have to be the flower. <laughs> We're blooming. We're blossoming. I'm so done.
Should I just, I have to get rid of them at this point. Listen, I might not know how to take care of flowers, but I do know how to take care of hairs. So, that looks really bad now. Should have left it. Should have just left it, Mal. Uh, don't fucking move. Nobody move! All right. My flowers look like fucking shit. They are, they are real and they, it's fall, so they're falling. It's fall here and my flowers are in full fall form. Say that. It's fall here and my flowers are in full fall form. I could say it. 